So welcome to the a special edition of uh, this clubber preview of the Gabby Super Value Senior County Hurling Championship. Much looked forward to mouth watering prospect and the colour of Kerry Senior Hurling Championship County Final Day um, is unbelievable the atmosphere it's one of the big days some would say it's even bigger although the crowd might be bigger than a Kerry senior football final because of the closeness of the community in North Kerry and they all come to see what is going to happen now it features of course Bally Duff 25 times winners of the senior hurling championship against uh, a team and a club who have won it for 50 years that's Abby Dorney Abidonia are outsiders going into this uh, final. Um, Bally Duff are strong favourites, but county finals are there to be won on the day. And who's to say that David will not slay Goliath? The Abidonia Davids against the Bally Duff Goliaths. So we will be looking forward to that. We'll also be looking back to the two semi finals. We'll be showing you some highlights from them. There were two good games particularly the second game between Ballyduff and Kilmoyley, and uh, that was a real classic that required extra time. With me is my usual <coughs> monthly crew, um, and on my right, I've got John O'Dowd. John's a freelance journalist. He's been commentating in, on the on clubber on the Senior County Hurling Championship. So he's a vast knowledge of foot, sorry, hurling, um, <laughs> and very little knowledge of football. But he tries very hard, in fairness. Uh, John uh, is uh, writes on the game as well for the Kerryman and other uh, publications. Now, to me, to my left, I have to be very careful with the introduction of this thing. His wife and children. You're the Lord. <laughs> his wife and children have been on to me and said, they "Go easy with Dad." Well, the Dad is Tinder. James McCarthy. Tinder. He's a very sensitive chap. He's got no sense of humour, but he has eight, which none of the rest of us have. Although Aidan claims that he is a, an intermediate championship medal that fell out of some fellow's pocket uh, in at Fertor Kilmoyley, but. Uh, if you look at this Kilmoyley former grade eight senior county championship medals, don't doesn't play cricket like Ian Brick, another man with with at least eight. But however, uh, he is uh, uh, the life and soul of any discussion on hurling and a deep knowledge and involved with underage hurling sides. He was involved with Kerry back in the day at senior level. And he's also a good coach in Camogie, but don't tell his daughters that. James McCarthy, you're quite welcome. You. Now, at the end of the table is a man who was so nervous that he had to back his way up the stairs. He couldn't walk straight <laughs> with nerves. Um, and this is Aidan Leahy from the Abbey Dorney Club. Aidan, uh, an accomplished intermediate hurler with uh, Abbey Dorney. Uh, and, <laughs> and he also plays junior Camogie, sorry, hurling. <laughs> Uh, Aidan has been with us all along. He lives and dies by our Abbey Dorney hurling. So uh, he has a real interest on, uh, in the game and he can't wait. He tried to paint his car the black and amber of Abbey Dorney until he painted the windscreen and couldn't get to work. And uh, I think Stephen Stack gave out to him. <laughs> anyway, uh, we have to say as well, by the way, I was out Abbey Dorney way today on tours Bally High. And the amount of flags and buntings, etc. Every house is bedecked. They haven't actually painted the sheep or the cattle yet, but there's a number of cars uh, parked around the place as well in the colour of the team colours of uh, Abbey Dorney. So real atmosphere there, uh, out there, lads, and there is an absolute appetite. And the same in Belly Duff, I would imagine. We were out there for the press nights, both in Abbey Dorney and in Belly Duff, and it is obvious that. This final, like every county final, has captured the imagination of the locals and both want to win it and win it badly. So we are going to be carrying that game on Clubber Live from just after one o'clock on Sunday with interviews and build up to the game and then bring you the game live itself with analysis and, uh, and uh, post-match reaction. So you look forward to that and you can get the game, just that game, or you can buy uh, the game and, of course, all the football is happening over the weekend. Dare we mention football when we're discussing hurling in North Kerry? The two boys to my left will 
soon decapitate me if I keep on. But you can get a uh, annual pass, and that's the one to get for uh, from Clubber, and you'll be able to see all those games. If you can make the match, you'll be able to watch it in the comfort of your home. So there are the boys that we have. That's our panel. And uh, I suppose before we look forward, we're going to just turn back the clock a couple of weeks and we're going to have highlights now of the first semi-final where Ballyhig came into that pretty fancy side after putting out Crotter in the quarter-final after extra time. But they met an Abidorni side and a Michael O'Leary and a defence who were in top form. Get it into his stride. This is good defending by Bally Hike. Good group defending. And as Graham Slattery who tries to come away from it, can't clear his lines. Chance now for Abby Dorney. Can they get a shot off? No, again, great work hassling by the Bally Hike defense. Working as a unit here. That's great stuff. Here come Abby Dorney again now. Chance of a score. It's taken. And it's gone over the bar from 40 meters. Here go Bally Hike now. Sprinting away as Shemi O'Farran. O'Farran tries to find Jordan Goggin. That's an interception. It'll be a chance of a score from Mikey Clifford. It is a score from Mikey Clifford. Here with Jed Mansell. Jed, lovely ball, raking delivery in towards Mansell. Yeah. Instant control by Oshin Mansell. This will be a beauty. Oh. This is an absolutely superb Nabi Dorney player. Inside. This is a chance now. He's looking for the free again, but Bally Hyger well able to defend that. That's good work here in Casey. Casey, can he come out with the ball? Again. Abby Dorney won't let this attack lie. Graham Slattery's in. Now it's David Egan. Egan from the queue in towards Mansell again. This is a dangerous score. This is a wonder oh, score. That's David Egan from an almost impact. It. So is Niall O'Mahony. But again, it's Abby Dorney who come out of it. It's O'Hanafan finds Ronan Donovan. What can Ronan Donovan do? This will be an absolute beauty. It is an absolute beauty. Stay covered live and exclusive on Clubber TV. Here's Michael O'Leary again. O'Leary, he could try from long range here. He sizes up his options. He goes from long range. He did size up his options and he made the absolute right decision. Going Abidoni's way. Here's Philip Lucid now from 80 metres. Can he get the first score again? Seems to be drifting off to the left again. Eric Walsh trying to keep it in play. It's caught inside the square. It's flicked. It's gone. The big man has it. What can he do? Lays it back to Brian O'Reardon. O'Reardon will try for a score from 45 metres. No, that's never on target. Drifts off to the left and wide. That's a sixth wide. For Valley Iger still. Philip Lucid keeps it in. Michael Lee. What's going to happen here? It's blocked. What a block. The ball stayed in play. Unbelievable. Tommaso Hennepin. And he tries to get it under his grasp. Here's Jack Sheehan. What can Sheehan do here? Sheehan picked up a yellow card. Sheehan runs he away from Goggin. Oh, half blocked down by no. Shamey O'Farnon. In towards Mansell. Oshin Mansell. He's got a man inside him. Can't get off the pass. Does get off the pass. Brilliant pass. Chance. Hooked. Colobodge. Wonderful defending. Colobodge. He prevented a goal there. Oh by Abby Dorney defence and Jed Mansell's there to clear his lines as he's been doing all afternoon as a sweeper so far Kieran O'Regan blows the half time whistle in Austin Slack big game from him John but it's Abby Dorney on the run though it's James O'Connor the skipper this will be an inspirational score James O'Connor he's on the burst from the half back line he charges all the way up to O'Leary breaks for Egan back to Brendan O'Leary Brendan in towards Mansell, this is dangerous against David O'Sullivan. Oh, Mansell will win it against David O'Sullivan. Takes on his man, chance of a goal! Yeah. It's a man in the Oh, Mansell, back in the net! As soon as it came in, you knew there was trouble. Away from David O'Sullivan, away from Graham Slattery, pulled back by Slattery, got the shot off. Back in the net, oh, Mansell, big in. Also, Hannafan. Oh, Hannafan goes long, 113 in Abbey Dorney, 3 points belly high, in high towards Mansell again. Ah. Mansell takes that easy, under no pressure. This could be an easy score for us in Mansell. Ah, that's way too easy. An opportunity this year, they're going to be in a final, unless belly high perform some kind of a miracle over the last 15 or 20 minutes. Eric, Eric Walsh, can he find a miracle? Eric puts it over the bar, it might be field. Callum O'Sullivan trying to go all the way back with him. Phelan goes well, in towards Jimmy O'Halloran, what can Jimmy do? Jimmy, back to Philip Lucid. Lucid will try and strike from 50 metres. It'll does. be a beauty from Philip Lucid. Great score for Phillips. Here's Kieran Casey. Ah, oh, Abby Dornier sweeping up well back there. Good link up by Jordan Goggin. After good work by Philip Lucid. Jordan Goggin does deserve a point. Has he got it? Jordan Goggin. Yes, he has. 
If any man deserved a score, Colin Walsh uh, can Colin get there? No, no. missing, bit of missing inside. Here's Tommaso O'Hanifan. O'Hanifan lays it off. He's done a great man marking job. Chance of the score. This is Jack Sheehan. Jack hasn't scored today. I see now Jack Sheehan. Abby Dorney at the back. I no. say that Abby Dorney defence is sponsored by Dyson. They're hoovering everything up. Here's Jimmy O'Halloran to David O'Malley. That'll be a point. This to Dorney handle it better. Youthfulness as well. Young side. Far more experience. Here we go. Pop pass towards David O'Mahony. What can David do? He's got a point already off the bench. But again, out comes Big Stephen again. Has the slither in his grasp. Referee blows the final whistle. Kieran O'Regan. It was very fitting. There was an, an Abbey Dorney defender with the ball in his grasp. Stephen e So now there were the highlights of the opening semi-final at the Austin Slack Park. And I suppose... It would be right to come to the Abbey Dorney man. Aidan, that was a victory. I, I wouldn't say unexpected, but I think he expected to get a bigger test from Kilm uh, from Bally High, who really didn't just perform on the day. Yeah, I'd say I suppose their legs were probably gone from the week before. In fairness to them, they put in, ma in a massive effort. And I've been kind of, I know it's probably a bit harsh to say, but they did pay for not putting Krata away when they should have a normal time. And... They went to extra time where they really should have been out the gate and, and they probably paid for that 20 minutes of extra hurling like, and especially on the, a really hot day back in the quarter final. So they never really hit the ground running at all but in fairness, like David Orney lads played it to perfection really. Professional, started strong and uh, kept a 10 point lead in it for the whole game. You know, Not that that made any difference for the gang of us that was in the terrace because we were still you know, waiting for something to <laughs> go wrong as, Fall it, apart. <laughs> as it has done for the last couple of years. So it was nice uh, to get to the final whistle, um, even with the gap there. But um, no, it was nice and controlled and professional. And look, when you're when you're waiting as long as we're waiting, sometimes you need the soft route to get into the final. You know, some, you just need yeah. the kind of breaks and get in there and just get the job done. So um, it's only the second time in my life I've seen a big Orny win a, a semi-final in the Gony Championship. So um, you, we're not going to complain too much, uh, no matter how we get there. Yeah, I, you're only a baby, really. So second time in your life isn't bad at the age you are. Um, you'll eventually uh, reach the age of reason, I suppose, will you? Um, right, talking about a man who yet. should have the age of reason, but he hasn't, despite his, uh, his, uh, his years on this planet. Uh, James, um, what impressed you about at Abbey Dorney victory? If you take the fact that Belly Haig, you know, didn't perform... Um, the defence, yeah. make a case for, for, uh, for strong, yeah. the Abidorni defence and some of the, the big players in there. Yeah, you, you, you'll have to, that, that's the backbone of their team, really. That is this, that's, if they are to win on Sunday, their defence has to play again. Which, in fairness, I, I'll say again because they have carried this team, I think, so far. I know we've talked about Mike Leary and O'Sheen up front, but they've been very miserly at the back. In mm -hmm. fairness, so they shut down Belag. Belag got a couple of opportunities, all right, but on the whole, Abidorni just held them at arm's length all day long. The leg was so flat against so it wasn't like it's six day turnaround is terrible. It's a seven day turnaround for some teams it was terrible. We talked to it before, it should never happen. It shouldn't happen from a quarter final to a semi final. You're disrespecting your semi final. But beyond that, Abbott only only had seven days, like Ian like, said, like I know twenty minutes extra time, but they just felt so bad. It was just it felt there everything that is from the first minute you could say, Oh my god. It was just knew it wasn't going to be their day, and like you know, they, you know, it felt like they accepted it after twenty minutes. It was like this is not going to be our day, and Abby Dorney just said, "Right, okay, we're going to we'll take this day." So Abby Dorney just kind of stepped into the breach and said, "Right, you're not going to take it, so we'll take yeah, it." They were probably lucky. Just moved in. Michael, just, Michael hit the crossbar in the first half. It could have been. They were very lucky to hit the crossbar because you know if that goes in, could have been cricket. They score. really could have t torn yeah. away from like you know. Step surprising. Poor. I, I just felt sorry for Billy Hike. Yeah. Huge. Victory the week before, huge yeah, emotion yeah. around, and then yeah. fall flat. Yeah. And it's a very a young side, of course, we have to emphasise as well. So I'm sure Barry Hyde will be back. John, um, we were commentating on that game, were we? Yeah, no, we were. Um, yeah, and looking at him, you know, Mike O'Leary, um, he wasn't in at full forward the whole time. He was out the field. Fancy <laughs> kind of uh, fancy O'Halloran, the manager, kind of pulled us up on that and let us know that. Kind of well, the reason was that he can cause trouble wherever he is. He takes marking, and there was that kind of in and out with him, and that's the way they kind of play him. Um, were you impressed? I mean, uh, Michael has scored what is it, three thirty-five in the championship so far 
uh, he's a he's a huge threat, isn't he? And he had a huge game on that evening as well. I would say like it was a real professional performance from Abby Dorney. There was nothing spectacular about it, but it was a lot more solid than if you go back the previous week to the St. Brendan's game in the quarterfinal where they hit 20 wides and they kind of just barely fell over the line at the end of that game. I think Oshin Mansell got another goal down the stretch there just to get them over the line, but they made real heavy weather of St. Brendan's. That could easily have been a similar scenario the following week against Ballyhaig if Abby Dorney hadn't have improved. And they certainly did improve. Like I say, it wasn't spectacular, but it didn't need to be. They got off to a good start. They took the lead. They, I think it was 12-2 or something at half time. So they had the game won at that stage. Like yeah. It didn't matter that uh, Ballyhaig had the breeze in the second half. They were never pulling uh, that deficit back, especially with the defence that Abby Dorney have at this moment in time. Like It's very seldom you have a team in the same year, in pretty much every single game, where all six defenders are playing well. Like, you can't really pick a weak link there at the moment in <coughs> Abby Dorney and say, this fella can be got at, or that fella can be got at, or someone has to cover for him, or there's, there's a weakness there. All six defenders are playing well in their individual battles and how they come together as a collective. And I still think there's more to come from Abby Dorney. Like, if you look at it, Michael O'Leary, he did venture between the full forward line and... Uh, the half forward line. He still only scored one point from play, like and an eight frees. But I thought it was there was signs that not just Oshin Mansell, but David Egan chipped in and uh, Jack Sheehan chipped in with a score and Callum O'Sullivan chipped in with a score. They certainly have looked over the last two games that they know that Michael O'Leary is going to be double marked and often triple marked at times, and they do they have realised Abby Dorney that other fellas have to score, and that's an, that's another important development if they're going to win at the weekend. James, as the hurler in particular, and a championship hurler, though it's a long time ago, um, James, uh, what would Abby Dorney have learned? I mean, before the game, poor old Aidan was telling us that the one fear he had was, you know, the second half fade-out syndrome. The fact that they've gone so close before, they're flattered to deceive, and, you know, have kind of fallen off the horse. Now, uh, what did they have learned? Would that give them confidence having got over the line and are now in a final? What they have learned? You know, what they've learned, we hope, is that, as you say, they don't need to rely on Michael Leary. That's the one thing they have to learn and not maybe not go one-dimensional. Yeah. Because I saw it against, our, against St. Brendan's. They went so one-dimensional for 15 minutes, yeah. Brendan's pulled them back. Yeah. Because Michael Leary, bang, 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 and it was, oh, my God, it got yeah. so monotonous and it was cut out by Dazzler. And I said, Jesus, this... Then St. Brendan's were in the game. Boy, Abby Dorney just doing that. Yeah, yeah. A very solid monster possession. Yeah. They kept pinging the same ball. You hope that they might have learned that vary the game because you won't take this bad enough defensive part by going one route one the whole day long. Yeah. But then again, I remember Aidan Boyle played two county finals inside full forward against Ixna. Both occasions. Man, he had both occasions. Goals in one. Had a hat trick in one. He got yeah. two in another. Yeah. So, <laughs> then again, <laughs> we're giving out about it. But if it works, you do it. Yeah. But I... I think you're going to find a lot tougher against the podcast law, maybe. Kyle O'Connor knocking around the place. Kevin yeah. Goulden sweeping up. There's going to be... What will happen is you, the ball won't stay in there long. It's going to oh. be picked up so quick by those bellow fellas sweeping around yeah. there. They will gauge that. Because what they want is players back in there, that area. Yeah. Then they have Podge up front and they have Jack Goulden. And they have, you could say, Luke Rotts with three lads, three loose lads. Maybe yeah. 70 yards of space. God. Yeah. That's, that then is when they're in trouble. They need yeah. structure in the whole game. Keep it structured, keep it tight, and they'll be in it till the very end. Did you ever play full forward? Look at that camera there with the wide <laughs> lens, will you? When you're answering that, look at the wide lens you know, one. You were, is it a big head or a big mouth? I played mouth? twice. Oh, you played twice full forward? I won forward. twice. And forward. you won twice at full forward? So, it's not bad. Not wow. bad. Not bad. And, <laughs> on that bombshell... You're trying to catch me. <laughs> <laughs> on that bombshell of James McCarthy being a target man, right? right? Normally he's targeting someone at centre-back. <laughs> but on that bombshell, we will lead that semi-final. And now we will look at the highlights of the second semi-final. And what a semi-final this turned out to be. It went to... Well, we'll leave you watch it in case you haven't seen it now. And we'll be back to discuss that semi-final um, after you see the highlights. Them. <laughs> That's it. 
It drives him and we're off and underway and Kevin Gooling straight away is the man who nips in and picks it up and he's going to send it in towards his brother Jack. Jack has it, has a look at the post. Jack Gooling is back in the team. This one is dropping short though. John B. O'Halloran. And it's in the back of the net. John B. couldn't hold it. Podge, Podge, Podge got Brian. it off and flicked it there before John B. stood still waiting for it and Podge flicked it just as it got to his hand into the top corner. What a start for Belly Duff. What a start. Podge by our side. Podge Boyle is over there, also underneath it, I think is the number five, is it Tomas Godley that's back there, or is it, is it James, oh it's not, it's Coleman Savage that's all the way out there actually, but Jack Goulding has it in the hand, and Jack Goulding underneath the pavilion here, Jack Goulding oh, has four. sent it over the bar. Two possessions for Jack Goulding. He's under pressure from three and four, he finds the pass, and a block down there as Mossy was trying to send it inside, it's Kevin Goulding, Goulding is going to go from distance here, the breeze will carry it over the bar from Kevin oh, Goulding's wow. shot, oh what a score. What a fantastic score from Kevin. David McCarthy wins. It gives it to James Godley. Look at James Godley. He's going to pop it inside looking for Tom Ronan. Podcast slows out in front. Ronan is making a nuisance of himself. Tom Ronan has it. Oh, he's looking at the goal maybe for a second there. He's going to pop it out here. Chance for Ronan Walsh. Ronan Walsh has sent it over the bar. That was a great play by Kilmoy. The hands walks it back inside here now to oh. Coleman. Coleman's going to go back to John B again. John B has Jack Goulding coming in towards him. Pressure. He's going to look for Dara Nolan here. And uh, they're not uh, doing any favours for the Kilmoyley faithful in the stands. It's built by James Gatton. Podge Boyle is on it. Podge is going to pop it in. Jack Goulding with a chance to bury it. Here! Oh, what a goal by Jack Goulding. What a finish. What a finish. Absolutely brilliant finish. Great uh, vision by Podge to see him there floating in. He was one on one then. But look, Kilmoyley, they brought that on themselves by messing out at the back. And Mangan clears his lines for Belly Duff. Looking for Podge Boyle. But Flora gets a touch. Podge Boyle has it anyway. Podge, is he's looking for a goal again, this time he's going to take his points and puts it over. That's great. Send it up to Jack Goulding. Jack turns his man and gets away from Darren Olin. Has Daniel Collins come in across him. Jack Goulding is oh, going to put this between the posts. Hey, fair enough. Well won back there and turned over. It's Ronan Walsh who has it now. Daniel Carroll lost the ball. Ronan under pressure from Kevin. He's having a look at the post, Ronan Walsh. They need this one and they get it. Great score. Phil Manson is brilliant there to win. McCarthy is going to work it out. Looking for Ronan Walsh. Can Ronan keep it in? He just about has yes, kicked it in yes. there. Does very well, does Ronan Walsh. Against Evan Boyle. He shrugs off Evan Boyle. This will surely lift the crowd if it goes over. That's a it's going to go all the way it's over. Ronan. Let's get into it. This one is going to fall the way of Massey O'Connor. O'Connor. They'd rather him much closer to goals with the ball in his hand. Pawdy is going to give it to Ronan Walsh again. Walsh shrugs the shoulder. Ronan Walsh going for a score. And Ronan Walsh with an excellent point. Very well. It's a good one. Looking for Ronan, goes through his hand though. Can Philip Manson get onto the break? Anthony Kevin coming out with him. Philip has it in the hand and he has great pace. Philip Manson now going on the run. Aidan O'Connor tracking him as is Anthony Kevin. Goulding came out to meet him. Manson puts it back in the hurley. Phil Manson going all the way. Oh, Phil Manson. Absolutely brilliant, boy. I mean, we to see the replay here. To me, it was three catches. Uh, but what a f- oh, he gets him out of the ground, Jack. Great replay there. What a finish. The keeper should be there. Oh, he's got to go to the early, but and Kilmoyley are back. That has breathed life into the Kilmoyley. So after their start, Bally Duff, it's half time now. It's 2 10 to 1 9. Kilmoyley, after it is Godley. Godley gets through a challenge, gives it to Shawnee Nolan. Nolan was thinking of going for a score here. Not exactly known for his scoring. He's going to pass it inside now to Philip Mansell. Mansell, a goal in the first half, a point in the second. And what a stat. He's going to throw it in now between uh, Ronan and Walsh, but it's flicked in, in the way here now of David McCarthy. McCarthy going towards the end line. Flicks it inside. In the hand of Mossy Connor. Oh. Mossy Connor puts it over the bar. But now when he's off on a run, he's bouncing the ball off the ground. Long ball inside. Podge has it in the hand. <laughs> Podge has got pass from McCarthy. Podge Boyle has put it over the bar. Flora did not have a clue with that. And Aidan O'Connor has it. O'Connor gives it to Segal. And Adam Segal is going to look cross field for Luke Rochford making that run again. And he has it in the hand. He's past Donald Kennedy. Luke Rochford with the ball in the hurley. Luke Rochford looking for a score. Luke Rochford gets his score. That's absolutely quality cornerback. He's going to go cross field again to Podge Boyle. Boyle. Has it in the hand again. He gives it to the runner off the shoulder. That's Evan Boyle. Evan, he has a man inside, but Evan's going to go himself and put it over the bar. Jack Sullivan was making the run, but it's a score for that. A bit of a warm-up. The line ball is taken here. It's David McCarthy battling on the far side. Dylan Moriarty hits the deck. Here's Massey O'Connor. O'Connor goes for his own score. Oh, Massey no O'Connor. Oh, what a score this will be. Massey O'Connor raises the whistle now on the ball. Mansell 
looking inside. Can he get a crossfield ball inside? Mossy O'Connor. O'Connor has it in the hand here now. Mossy O'Connor has a shot at, po at the post and has put it over. And there's a big road. Up two fantastic points in the first half. Goulding looking for Podge Boyle. Boyle, he's causing for McCarthy all sorts of problems. Podge Boyle going all the way here. Podge Boyle! Oh, oh, in the back lead. Back off the net! Donny Duff back in the lead. 3-14 to 117. From a very nice point of view like that, brilliant by Boyle. But at the end of it, it's a miss hit that actually puts the ball underneath John B who came out to meet him. But you said that he's flown under awful, awful uh, trouble here. Outside him, yeah, and missed it off his left hand side. Actually goes under John B, who went high to try and spread himself. A few sitters to uh, Dara in goal for Billy Duff. That nice and friendly of him, though, isn't it? Ronan has it here now. Ronan Walsh. Oh. Can Ronan Walsh fight the wow. score from under the stand? What a score by the referee, too. Ronan giving it inside for Flor McCarthy. McCarthy has it in the hand here now. Flor McCarthy bearing down and goal. Passes it across. Oh, there's a flick inside. Oh, he's in the game. He's is the referee giving it? I'm he not is sure giving what's it. happening here now. He is giving it. Madness. And oh, he it's hasn't been injured anyway, but I think there was a late tackle as Flora was coming across. Paz Boyle wasn't happy. I think he thinks he'll Tom be Tom Renan, I think we'll credit it towards Tom Renan. Tom Renan with the goal. The green flag waved for good men. Gives it out to Daniel Carroll. Carroll is going to look crossfield. He's looking for Podge again. Podge versus Flo. Podge has it in the hand. Oh, Podge Boyle. Is he going to go for goal? Podge Boyle got to go. Oh, it's still by John B. O'Hanlon. Oh, John B. loses it. Oh, it's a scramble on the goal line. Who's back there? It's flicked away. It's, it's back to Podge again. Podge is going to put it over the half. Hat stopping stuff. It's all to front again. Or will Billy Duff come away with it? Ronan Walsh has it. Walsh gives it back to David McCarthy. Great little ball to Philip Mansell. Mansell, can he put Kinwiley in front? He's... He has yeah, put him in front. The umpire eventually chops it off the ground. David McCarthy's going to pop it inside, but Tom Renan not out in front. Oh, oh he's just about to it up. And he's inside. Got him for it. Oh, what a hook. What a hook by Kyle O'Connor. He got back there and saved the day. But Bobby O'Connor still has it. Still a chance. He's put it over the bar. He's been bound into the game by Bob Costello. But he has the score. And it's Luke Rockford. Rockford. Kennedy comes and misses. It's fallen inside to Podge. Podge, can he get away from his man again here now? Podge Boyle, it's knocked outside here. On the far side is J.P. O'Carroll. J.P. O'Carroll, a boy. Very, very soft free. The referee that's given a long ball now. Kevin Goulding is going to drive it long. Looking for any one of those bedded up forwards inside. Oh, it. Luke Rochford has it in the hand. Luke Rochford, oh, what a score! Has leveled it up. Morris Monan looks to the sky. He can't believe how he cut it. What a turn over the back. The unlikely man. I said it's on the week. Of the all the people to win a high ball there at the very end of the game to get a level score, you are not picking Luke Rochford out of the bunch. Absolute quality score by the young player. The sides are level again. And it's going to go to extra time. Oh, by the are not happy. They're looking for a couple of more minutes play. And well, so can so Wiley. Uh, Nobody's happy. Nobody's happy. Except for us watching home because we get to see another 20 minutes. Collins trying to get it back into the end. He does have it in the hands now. Oh, down goes, uh, I think it was Tomas Godley. Godley's down with cramp. It's gone inside now. It's Luke Rochford. Rochford. He, he has open road in front of him now. Bearing down and goal. Don Kennedy going with him. Does well to force him back. But Luke Rochford is going to stick it over the bar. Ah, brilliant. But you see just that camera. This is the final in the Kerry Hurling Championship. Ball is going to bounce the way of Jack in right here now. Can Enright open the scoring in this second period of extra time? Enright breaks through. He has a look at the post. Yeah, we do. Right. keeps it inside. Yeah. After the injury of Paddy O'Connor, Jordan Brick. Can he find the score? Can he find the target? It's dropping oh. inside. Oh, maybe square ball. But Darla Quinlan is just about dealt with it now. He comes away with it and hands it off to Jack Goulding. Goulding blocked down. Finds Evan Boyle. Boyle under pressure from Small Godley. Godley going in on him. It's going to break out here now. Lone and Walsh. Walsh has a look at the post. He felt the pressure coming, took his time, and has got the score for Tim Wiley. Great score. Great score. It is Jack Enright. Enright under pressure from Daniel Collins. Enright still going, trying to take them for a run down the, the sideline here. Jack Enright. Oh, what a score this will be. Jack Enright. Oh, oh, the right. white for Podge Boyle. One score is all belly up need, and they'll be in the county final at this stage, surely. Podge is going to look inside here now. Can they find the score? Great ball. The ball is going to stay in play. It's Killian Boyle. Boyle is going to take him on the run here now. Killian is going to go for goal. Killian Boyle! Goal! And they have booked 
Killian Bryan has booked Benny Bucks place in the county final. Game, set and match. That Not for the it. first time we said only last number of years. Boil to boil. Goal. They're going to go along anyway. Kill my Check in right underneath it. Broken down by John Godley. Neil Mangan gets down there in the end. Still battling away. You have a feeling now. It's only a matter of time. And Donica O'Callaghan. Here's the final whistle. And Bally Duff are back in the county final. And they will face Abby Dorney in two weeks time. In Austin Stack Park. And they'll battle it out for Nealis Flynn. But what a match it must be said. Both sets of players deserve great credit. What a game that was. What a welter of excitement. Particularly in the added minutes of normal time. And that jump, leap into the air. I think he thought he was going to catch a Ryanair flight uh, to, uh, to, uh, to London or something. Or Manchester bus. Luke got that point and brought it, and in at a time, I think Bally Duff were certainly the better side. Kilmoyley injuries really caught them late on. Paddy O'Connor gone early, and then all the other lads, the Jim Godleys, the um, Coleman Savages, these lads had been injured, came back, didn't have a lot of game time, and I think it showed at the end that Bally Duff were fitter, stronger, and deserved to win it in added time, uh, but I think Kilmoyley will forever and a day be, uh, you know, regretting the fact that uh, they conceded those two late points in first in, in second half uh, at a time. Listen, John, that was a classic game. It was it was something else. It was restored one's fate in the hurling championship and in sport. And you know, we had the All Ireland uh, game the, the the following day. The All Ireland final. Another game. We were spoiled for hurling that weekend. Yeah, it was unbelievable. Um, undoubtedly, the game of the championship, even ahead of the Crotta Belly High game the previous week, which was fantastic. But this was a whole different level of hurling. And first of all, you have to give huge admiration to Kilmoyley uh, for taking it all the way down the wire. When you consider they lost uh, Dougie Fitzell and Robert Collins in the build up to the game after the quarter final. And like, if you're talking about the six day turnaround for Belly High, you also have to mention it with regards to Kilmoyley as well, because that game against Causeway went right down to the wire and Causeway could even have taken it extra time. Remember if Evan Murphy had got a goal at the very end. So, um, Kilmoyley, they lost Paddy O'Connor then after less than 10 minutes, you know, and the fact that they were two points ahead uh, deep into injury time of the second half of normal time tells you everything about uh, John Myler's side, like they, they most certainly died with their boots on, but they had nothing left. Uh, for extra time because uh, I think it was was it James Godley and uh, Tom Murnan and all had to go off even before the start of extra time and Bally Duff have a brilliant bench like JP O'Carroll was one of those along with Luke Rochford who saved them just before normal time with a point and then obviously Luke Rochford's score was a score that will never be forgotten by the young lad himself and by everyone connected to Bally Duff and indeed uh, Kerry Hurling but they had the bench and it's not just Mikey Boyle either Jack uh, Enright was huge in yeah, uh, extra time two great scores um, Jason by. Bowler came on Killian Boyle came on and got the goal at the end Dara Slattery came on he probably would have started only he had a a bit of a head injury from the previous week from the game against Licks Nan. So it was just outstanding game of hurling. Absolutely brilliant. Like even <laughs> even Podrick Harrington, the belly duff manager, he didn't really know what to say afterwards because it was just so good, like the overall standard of the hurling from both sets of teams. And like, no matter what anyone says, if you knock Kilmoyley out of the championship, it makes you feel an extra foot tall because... They, they are one of the standard bearers. Aristocrats, would you yeah, call them? Yeah, most certainly. Yeah. A lot there are other names to call them, but <laughs> aristocrats is the most. Uh, while while James is here, Especially I call them aristocrats. <laughs> and, right, uh, uh, Bally Duff obviously would consider themselves of the same standard, but I think even for this young-looking Bally Duff team, they will have grown in stature from knocking out Kilmoyley, 100%. Right. James is cringing here, so you enough praise to <laughs> Bally Duff now. James, I suppose, disappointed as you would be uh, after watching that, but now having analysed it and thought about it since, it was a brilliant game, number one. Both sides traded blows. He could have taken it a normal time. I don't think he deserved to take it in, 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 in no. extra time. Yeah. No. So what was your overall analysis of the game in hindsight? Hindsight, look at it now, yeah. you know, a massive performance with what we were down to. As you see, I like looking at this, we, we don't get many hurlers every year from minor ranks, but we produced one and we've produced like Ronan now. 
Look at him. One of the players of the championship. Players of the championship so far. Yeah, really yeah. has that performance on yeah. the night. Like, yeah. Paul's got 2-12, Rona got 15 or 16 points. Yeah. Yeah. Six from play. Yeah. Six from play. That's yeah. massive. Absolutely massive. Yeah. Like, what it took for us, so when Paddy went off, we talked about it, Collins was in a deeper role then. That's yeah. negating Collins' influence up front. Right. So, like, you're taking away a bit of... And, like, the real turning point in the whole game, we can talk about Luke Rochford's point, the real turning point was Kyle Connor's block mm-hmm. on Jordan Brick. 10 yards from goal. That was the game yeah. winner. That was, yeah. that was the game winner. Game ago. was over. We were going out the door. We'd be talking, Aiden must have made me in Dexter Colours here too tonight, but okay. we were going out the door. Game was over. What a brilliant block. And got the second flick away as well. That was the winning of the game. Because at that stage, we were a point up. That would have made us four points up. That would have put pressure on Bell off the ground and feel and get a goal. Yeah. And there's no way they were going to get a goal at that stage. But and it like was even, unbelievable. He even the score. That's young Bobby and Bobby got... But yeah, he got absolutely clean. Oh, he got absolutely clean. Not, he, he got nothing for that. Like. Nothing. No, yeah. very Bobby like. And Bobby was. Bobby had got injured. He was on one guy, one in, but in legs we had. Yeah. Oh, we had only a couple of subs. Laugh. Like fair play to put over the bar because if I saw Pod coming from me, <laughs> <laughs> I'd be going the other way. But it was it was just the, the performance was unbelievable. Looking back at it, as you say, you would have to say to our lads, "Well done." Yeah. Well done. We can like you could be disappointed, yes, but there's a way of going out of the championship. There's a way yeah. of losing and there's a yeah. way of winning. And if you're going to lose, lose that way. Don't go out in a whimper or go out yeah. dying yeah. on your shields, as they say. Yeah. But like, and Philip Mansell's Philip goal, Mansell's one of the goals it. of the season. Brilliant. And he's had a good championship. He's, he's had, had a very, very, very good championship. Yeah. Like, He'd been another teams fella, in the championship, yeah. Another fella, like, if you look at the only thing I see about that as well is the influence off the bench. We talked about it. Belov got one three. We got zero off our bench. Yeah. That's, we lost by six points. Belov got one three off the bench. There you are. Yeah, That's I know. Do you realise that Jamal is coming back again next year and this kind of an idea of putting yourself forward <laughs> as an Irish <laughs> man for the Kilmiley job? No, I think they, if they saw me coming, they would have no players left. Yeah. But they wouldn't mean to, they'd still <laughs> leave, they'd yeah. leave the pitch. Do you think no. Morris Monane would work with you? He'd be both very agreeable. <laughs> we, were and not, yeah. we won loads of games together. And you're not, did you? We won loads of games together. Yeah. No problem at all. I think he saved you one day on Benny Duffin. I was trying to beat the head off you to be fair to Morris. Uh, although, should we be fair to Morris? Because he's still with us. But, um, if uh, looking at that uh, from a neutral pers- perspective, Aidan, um, looking at that semi-final... Does that strike the fear of God in you, the way Bally Duff finished that game? It, is a, it was a serious, serious test, right? Serious game from. Um, look, I suppose you, you could say that about. John mentioned it before um, the semi finals about Belly Hyde and the massive performance they had to put in to beat Crata and the parallel with Cork, and you saw that bore out, to be fair. So maybe there's that into now, I think, the break that's been there, a two week break. Feels like a month, considering we've had about three days in between every other game. Uh, so maybe that's not much of a factor, but um, it is. It's a it's a serious it test. It's yeah, it's a serious yeah. test. But like that, I think for Abidorni, just getting there was the hard part. Like and like Abidorni can can have a crack off off belly off, you know, not to not to come in here and try and do the usual thing when you're a free hit. It's fun, a free hit or something. Like there, there is there's more pressure on belly off, obviously. Of course, there as is, yeah. as. The second most successful team in the competition, but uh, it was like I think Balido found out everything they need to know about themselves, whereas Eddie Orney probably still haven't. Um, so that's the that's the main thing for Balido. They know exactly what they're made of. Dara Satri was huge in coming on for the last. What it was? Is it actually just uh, not? Did he come on at the end of the normal time? I can't remember I now. Don't but, yeah, time. just about towards the end of normal. Like, the, the difference he made in extra time, like just yeah. the, he mopped up ball and yeah. outplay stayed or not. like so. Yeah. He's obviously going to be back and and ready to go from the start as well. You'd imagine on, on next next Sunday. So, um, yeah. Look, we know so, we we know about it. Off we're going to be yeah. Unbelievable and and they they're they're a very good team so yeah thanks Aidan so yeah um two very good semi finals Bally Duff coming through a tougher one they probably had a tougher route to the final as well but uh, Bally Duff but Abby Dorney they showed our metal as well and um, big win over Bally Haig who were a team the inform team really but as the lads have been saying maybe that six day turnaround or whatever was just. Uh, just too much for them and they're young as well and they will be back good work there by Brendan O'Sullivan and the boxer with Bally Haig so that's the two semi-finals and we'll be on shortly now to discuss the final itself is it going to be Bally Duff with number 26 or can the boys from Abbey Dorney my club can they actually <laughs> end a 50 year famine
Welcome back to the special uh, Gabby Super Value um, Senior Hurling Championship Final Preview. And a reminder again that this game will be on live on Sunday uh, from shortly after one o'clock. The game throws in at two and we bring you the, home, the, the whole game live and exclusive on Clubber TV. So get your subscription in for the game or a better value we think is the annual pass and if you look up clubber.ie uh, or clubber tv you will find ways and means of doing that now the final itself of course bally duff are uh, the i suppose the traditional team the team who are used to winning championships they've lost a good number as well mind you um and abby dorney new kids on the block last time they were there uh, i think aiden lee he was about four or five uh, it was 2005, uh, 19 years ago. He had a teddy bear back then and he still has him. And uh, he's hanging somewhere um, at so the bottom so of his so road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's nailed onto the fence. Yeah, yeah to your point, fence, I think I somebody got uh, suggested that he should be hung. Anyway, <laughs> uh, if we go to Aiden, Aiden, we look at these two teams. And the one thing you have to say is, I suppose, uh, James said it earlier there to us uh, before we started. Um, they're two unbeaten sides. So it's great to see two unbeaten sides get into the final. Yeah. They're there on merit. Now, make a case for Abidorni for me, where you see their strengths and weaknesses in uh, less than three minutes. <laughs> um, well, look, Stop the strengths, I think we've, we've covered the strengths. The strengths are the defence. Yeah. Uh, one to seven. Um, but in fairness, I think the man who's been wearing number nine for most of this championship, Daniel Leary, is also, like, he's underrated. In terms, obviously, Michael gets the the, the spotlight but Daniel's unbelievable second best player I'd say nearly. he's been know. really especially yeah. against our fort as well I thought he yeah. really looks out the ball against our fort like, great man to get a point now he can only put the ball over the bar if there's four fellas hanging off him if he gets the ball <laughs> on his own <laughs> don't worry about it <laughs> no. yeah. in fairness the man can put the ball over from anywhere like he's got a he's a great hand as well, as well so he's a good option in terms of you, like let's you know you line up Michael there's going to be three or four little fellas around him Daniel's always an option as well, like so he's got a great hand on him. And uh, in fairness, the work rate from the likes of David Egan, Jack Sheehan, Callum Sullivan, who Callum basically played midfield, um, marked Phelan Sullivan against Billy Haig, Phelan who's inside with, with Kerry for the last two or three years, and just marked him out of the game completely, like, you know. So um, he's uh, really exciting for us as well. I think Niall Matney's yet we're yet to see the best of him yeah. because he's been struggling yeah. <coughs> um a bit with fitness and stuff. Best midfielder um, last year and Kerry's one of yeah, the best. Yeah, uh, like Niall if Niall is on is on song like he can Good really player. be, you know, a, a key factor. So um look, you're not entitled to anything just because 'cause we're waiting the longest doesn't mean that we're we've the right to be next. I think the biggest parallel I can draw is to Waterford the time they made the All Ireland final in uh, twenty what was that, twenty eighteen was it? When they lost to Galway. Like they just thought they deserved to win it because they hadn't won it in so long. It's not the way, like you know, especially when they come up against the likes of Belly Duff. There's one club you can't be thinking that way. It's against Belly Duff because Belly Duff believe they have the right to win it because they're Belly Duff, you know. So um, if you, if you show any bit of mental weakness at all, like Belly Duff will pick you apart. So um, I would already know that they have to go and they have to perform, probably play the game of their lives basically to win this. And in fairness. There's it's 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 there like the possibility is there that they can go and do that, um I'd say I'd say James and the rest of uh, Clamoy will be <laughs> hoping that we do because I can see if Belly Duff do go on and win it on Sunday, I can see that being the first of, uh, <laughs> I, I I I actually really can see could that be. being the first could of a be. lot could be uh, for Belly Duff like I I think Belly Duff could hit thirty. And can really be looking lucky to, if they pick up one or two in that. In that. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's, that's not, no, being, that's not that's being unfair. He's not being unfair there. That's, not being unfair no, that, there. that's a real possibility. It could be like a possibility so. at all. Um, not being unfair. Yeah, we, 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 have to, we have to stop that bad enough train before it leaves the station. But <laughs> yeah. it's going to be hard to stop that train leaving the station over the next couple of years. But hopefully we can delay them one year anyway. <laughs> well, one way of stopping the train before leaving the station would be to send uh, James McCarthy out there and he could be the train driver and definitely he wouldn't leave the station. <laughs> Uh, no because when he was playing, he was the same way. No, you were a very good player, actually. Uh, James, Thanks you would have, <laughs> you would have, you, I can't remember your tall, actually. Uh, you, would, you would have had uh, tremendous rivalry with Barry Duff and and and, and you played them along the way in championships and finds and different things. Tell me, what makes Barry Duff? Why are they 
is tradition strength and you have the old like the boils anytime there's a boil involved and there has been for the last i don't know how long since liam and then you had uh you had Kenneth Cullum. Kenneth Cullum. In. Uh, the Jap, in yeah. Jap, Jap no, yeah. no, Mikey and, and Mikey Podge, Podge. No, Killian and Evan are coming. Killian and Evan, yeah. yeah there's boils everywhere. There. Uh, so they were a boil on your backside for so long, <laughs> right? <laughs> so tell me, uh, tell me about Barry Duff and particularly this team as you see them. Yeah, I suppose I, even though I was talking to Luke Rocci and Evan last week. They were doing a cool camp. They were, we were all together. Yeah, and just talking they, hurling. Like, and yeah. Rachi's is very, very humble guy. We're talking about his score. Yeah. He, in fairness, great, like, great pictures of Abidorni actually like, during the week. Yeah, uh, the, they were there with Abidorni and Belly Ruff legs. Yes, everyone do lads there. Like, cool camps, yeah. The great crack. Like, and, like, he didn't even think about that score. That, that wasn't even, he's, he wasn't even thinking about that. Like you, most fellas said, Jesus, I won, I won the game for us. Yeah, yeah. That was the winning of the game. That point was because mm -hmm. extra time we were done. We were done. But you'd say to him like, I said to them as well, when we won the four in a row, if we didn't win it, Belloff would win it. That's how good yeah, they are. Yeah. Because we think, and Belloff think, we deserve to be there. We're like Cork and Tipperary. In if you're in it, yeah. you win it. If we're in it, we win it. And yeah. we're not worried about the rest of them. It's a, it's a bit arrogant, yes it is. But yeah. it's just, we're in it, we win it, that's it. The, like the effort boys, they have a great saying, it's hard to beat the stripes in a the final. <laughs> they call us the stripes. Yeah, and it's, it's a fact because once we get to a final, we want to win it. And Belloff are the exact same. It's, yeah. it's a mentality, and I st you look at the, what the subs they brought on, they're on every other team in the county. Yeah. Darius Latry, Jack Enright, maybe JP Carroll, those fellas are on every other team in the county, and yeah. they're so well enough. That's the strength. That is the strength of that team. Killian Boyle yeah. is a t forward that could be on any other club in the county, yeah. in fairness, look at it as well. Like, so yeah. you have to take that into account as well. The impact of I mean, only have off the bench, will it be as strong? I don't think so. But have a real strong spine. And I think if Kevin Goulden, they have an ace in the pack. I you know we talk about the other Goulden's in the team, but Kevin, I think, at centre-back. That's going to be a key role. That's key. That really is key for me on Sunday. Ronan Donovan at the opposite in the field as well. <clears throat> Ronan, if he dominates there on that area, stop the supply. You've got to stop. If they stop at the half-back line, it doesn't get into Podge. It doesn't get into Rachi. But if they become open up there... Do you think Ronan, though, has to cut tail? His forward runs. Definitely, he was yeah. up uh, trying to score a goal that's, as well, and he's up front. That's my one worry. At the time. But like, I think maybe James Eden beside him has them. Right. If Ronan's going to sell you here and going to go off in a run, I'll sit in. And James, yeah. he has that. Yeah, he that. has, and Kieran Dean behind him has that. Yeah. And Stephen Egan. These guys I think they're a bit more savvy. They're, they've, yeah. they're not as green as. They're a good I, I'm, not, I'm not being yeah. disrespectful yeah. to everybody, but they were green before. We could yeah. open them up before, and we knew, right, bang, okay, here we go. But this team, I see a lot. A lot more about them. It will come down to the battle up front. If Pod Costello has the influence he did against Kilmiley again, that'll be huge. Will Abidorni give Podge 2 12? No, they won't. Mm -hmm. Will they give Rachi the space he got against us? No, we won't. Will they give the whole battle up for forward, forward line the space they got against Kilmiley? No, they won't. We mm -hmm. give them too much lateral altogether. Yeah. But then again, their hunger was savage. Yeah. They were savage hungry. They're, they're tackling. They're hunting us in packs. They kill us on that point. <coughs> and that's, uh, <coughs> excuse me, that's one point with Kilmiley. We always pride ourselves on being outworking other teams. We're outworking every team. Mm -hmm. And then our hurling will come true. Mm -hmm. And we'll take them that way. But off matched us every step of the way with that. Yeah. Their work rate was on par, if not better than ours. Yeah. And then they had the hurling as well. That's what, and in normal time, you couldn't see a winner because both teams are going hammering tongues at it. So, their work rate's got to be through the roof again. And that could be the factor that carries them over the edge. Maybe yeah. that work rate. Yeah. Like, I don't yeah. think as well, as it often is in Kerry Hurling, it can be a free-taking contest. I hope Judging not, by yeah. the last time we saw this particular referee. <laughs> Let it off. <laughs> he didn't blow the whistle for a half an hour. We were doing the game, yeah, yeah. We were doing that game. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. Unless he's had a massive change of heart. <laughs> I hope there, not. There won't be too many I hope not. That makes a great better final. Yeah. So but the boys there are happy with a free-for-all, by the way, <laughs> uh, their uh, viewers, because that's the way James played. Well, no, you were a stylish hurler, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> no, what I mean is, I was stylish of the year, I suppose. You were. <laughs> you were stylish. You wore a suit going to mass. But when you played, you were. Uh, right. On to John. John restored a bit of sanity to this panel. Bally Duff, talk to me. What do they have to do to beat, and what are their strong points uh, to beat uh, Abby Dorney, who, as James said, will have a, a hunger. They'll be ravenous to win this one. I think Bally Duff has to do what they have kind of failed to do so far in this championship and they've admitted it themselves. They have to stop the fade-outs when they go ahead. 
in the majority of their matches, Bally Duff have built up leads quickly. Seven, eight, nine points. Now, obviously, Abby Dorney cannot allow that to happen in a final. Yeah. But when Bally Duff have done that, we've seen it against uh, St. Brendan's in the very first game. We've seen it against Lixna. Kilmoyley, the We've way seen it up, against yeah. Kilmoyley. Every up. time they get off to a flying start, maybe 10 minutes, they get a bang in a couple of goals and then they fall asleep for 20 minutes. And they haven't been able to get to the bottom of why that has been happening. Maybe a touch of complacency comes in. Maybe they think the game is won. Maybe the other team just have a purple patch because in Hurlan, it's very rare that a team doesn't have a purple patch at some stage of the game. But they have to be better at holding consistency over the 60 minutes. Like, Ballyduff will feel that they have a better first 15. They'll feel that they have greater threats up front. They'll feel that they have a better bench. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to win the game. Yeah. Um, they have to be more consistent. I think a fellow we have to mention here is the Dubliner, Neil Mangan. Very understated, very quietly effective. Has Continued. been a big addition to this... Uh, Pally Duff team around the middle of the park. You know, he gets goes about his business in a really unfussy type of way, but a very nice hurler, and he's been a little cog in the machine. He'll never, he's never going to take the headlines, but without him there, they wouldn't be functioning to the same degree that they are functioning at the moment. So he's been a very good addition. And if you look at it from an Abby Dorney point of view, um, a very understated performance the last day was Tommaso Hannafane's man-marking job yeah. on Michael Lean. That was an exceptional totally performance, really, match. when you look at it, because Michael Lean had won the quarterfinal in extra time yeah. for uh, Ballyhig against Crotta, mm-hmm. and he was never allowed any leeway whatsoever against Tommaso Hannafay in the last day, because it was basically a player sacrificing his own game and just saying, I'm going to stop one of Ballyhig's uh, chief threats. And who knows whether that kind of a similar job will have to be done by different Abby Dorney players again the next day, especially when we go in looking at the individual matchups and who's going to stop Podge Boyle, yeah. Kevin Goulding, Jack Goulding, etc., etc. Uh, Aiden, yeah. listen to me. Um, actually, on, on t- I, just on Tomas there, I actually thought originally he was supposed to be picking up uh, Massey Yainer, but he went to Michael then, which it turned out to be a master stroke. And on Neil Mangan, like, he's definitely been a pleasant surprise for enough because he started the year cornerback. And he's moved up the pitch. Do you know, he's not a young lad. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, he's no. not. He's in his thirties. No. I thought the man was. Yeah. I thought he was. Yeah. I thought he was. Yeah. 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 Who's this nice year twenty year old? Who's this young fella? Yeah, it's um, just sorry. They moved up. Like um, they moved not, him up the pitch. You yeah. can tell when he gets the ball in his hand, like he's clearly bit of quality. Bit of quality. He played in Dublin at high enough level. I think he's a massive factor for him. He's married. He's living in Belly Dunnow. I think he's married to a girl from Belly Dunnow, and he picked up them by Belly Duff and. He's proved to be a huge uh, success. Now, matchups. We have to go through matchups. You be the best man for matchups because you never obeyed the manager in your life. <laughs> um, so you just picked up the next Whoever guy coming through. Yeah, Whoever, yeah. And, doesn't and, matter. Yeah, you did. And you were a very good team player as well. So you marked them, uh, you know, <laughs> tightly. Right. I uh, haven't got that off my chest. Uh, talking <laughs> to James about matchups. Let's t- take the Pally Duff forward line mm-hmm. against the Abby Doney back line, which has been, as you said earlier, outstanding. There are two outstanding individuals in the Pally Duff uh, forward line. There are a number more as well, but Podge Boyle, the captain, and Jack Goulding. Who do you think Abby Doney? We can second guess Francie O'Halloran, mm-hmm. but if you were Francie O'Halloran, um, what would you do? Or what would you be thinking, say? Like, if Jack is not natural number 11, not number 11, Jack's going to end up in the half-back line, Jack's going to end up here, end up there, so there is no man marker for Jack. Yeah. You've got to, what you've got to say to Abidoni, lads, is if he goes beyond the 65, Tomas, pick him up, you, pa- you have to pass him off the next yeah. one. You yeah. don't. Roland Dunham, if he's sent back, if he thinks he's going to go after Jack, problem straight away. There'll be a hole in the middle problem, of the Abidoni Problem, defense. problem, problem, problem. Yeah. So I know James is going to be there smart enough beside him to kind of say, we'll close that gap there now, like, but... You, do, you, do you actually assign a marker to him? He's that dangerous? You might have to. Do you think yeah. Jed after him? Say, Jed, just follow him. Just follow him. Mikey Clifford has Jed or Mikey. Mikey, Jed or Mikey. Just send him after him, maybe. They're mobile. Yeah. Just follow just follow. And then maybe, like with Jed, Jed, if Jack goes on to his, his own half back line, Jed could pop out a score on that side. Yeah. Jed could hurl away. Jed, Jed's a fine hurler. Oh, he's, oh, he's a good hurler. He's he can, he, it doesn't matter where he he's goes. He's Tony's so. son, isn't he? He is. Yes. Yeah. So you, you wonder, like, do they assign a man to him? Maybe they have to. Because he's not going to stay in the forward. Podge is different. Podge yeah. is the target. Yeah. Podge is going to be a target. He's a great pa- Who do you think, Podge? I would think they would have to. They'll just put Steve Neal on him. Yeah. I just, just so, say yeah. right. Yeah. This is your day. Yeah. Stand up. You want your own number three. We're trusting you. Bang. 
yeah. in you go because he's a great trust power. him you've got to trust you've got yeah. to trust if you don't trust your players Francie Arnold if you don't trust these players now after getting to the county final waste time like if, Steve, if Stephen can just break even knock yeah knock 50% even. of what goes into Podge on yeah. the ground like yeah. Flora I, I, I don't know I never saw Flora play get outplayed that much ever like Podge caught absolutely he caught a lot of ball that yeah. came in yeah. so everything. if Stephen can just knock 50% of it on the ground like yeah. the difference that's going to make is because like David yeah. Shepard, you have to accept that Podge is going to score he's going to give one tin give him one tin give him one tin you can't let I'd say like I'd be happy if I get Podge one tin yeah you think I'm not saying that, but <laughs> unless it's a very low score game, but like we gave him two twelve. Aiden has just gone. We gave him two twelve. Aiden wants no. to go to the pub. <laughs> <laughs> He's got <laughs> one ten. Right, okay. You give him one ten already. Give him one ten. The rest, the score is one twelve. Like, like let's say I think whoever out of Mike or Jed doesn't pick up um, Jack picks up Luke maybe. Yeah. And the rest of them, I don't. Maybe they fall into place as it's more positional play with Jamesy and Ronan. Jack, Jack Sheehan or like so Jack Sullivan yeah. probably and James Kind of that's an obvious yeah. Yeah. It's an obvious like battle Jack yeah. it's been weird with Jack he isn't really settled No anymore, he's kind of so moving across the line Yeah, like You could see Tomas Anafin picking up Jack Sullivan some stage short of the game as well like if he drops out into midfield or something like yeah. that So, But that's uh, um, their key battles lads uh, now we'll turn to John uh, Master Tactician with Tarbert last year um, not in the, the final. final. <laughs> not oh, in lost. the final. Oh, you lost. Sorry. Finals I, 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 told, I told you I wouldn't have <laughs> Finals are to win. <laughs> I wouldn't told you a letter. You, you end up down like Abby Dorney. I'm still trying to recover from 50 that. 50 years. Anyway, um, talking about the Abby Dorney forward line, particularly Big Mike, Mike O'Leary, and you also have Oshin Mansell there, you have Stephen Egan, and Jack Sheen, Stephen. I think, could be a factor uh, up there. Um, Callum Sullivan. And Callum Sullivan. Mm. Who in the Barry Duff back line is going to look after those. You have Kyle in there, obviously. Um, Darius Latry might start, for all we know. Evan Boyle played wing back the last day. And, of course, you have Kevin Goulding. I think you have to accept, just like that Podge Boyle is going to do a certain degree of damage at one end of the field, that Michael O'Leary is almost certain to do a certain degree of damage at the other end of the field. I don't think Michael O'Leary is uh, markable over the course of 60 minutes in any game. Mm -hmm. So what you have to do is reduce his influence to a considerable degree. And in fairness, you'd have to say in general play in the last two games, uh, whether by fair means or foul in some instances, St. Brendan's and Ballyhigh to a certain degree have restricted his uh, overall influence in a uh, General what did you play. say by fair means or foul? Would you change that to by foul means or fair? <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think probably Pod Costello, uh, if you're looking size by size and physicality, he's uh, with Mikey Boyle not in a position to start. And whether Bally Duff would want to take Mikey Boyle out of the game, even if he was fully fit to put him on a man to man job on Michael O'Leary, is debatable anyway. But with that scenario kind of taken away from them, it pretty much has to be Pod Costello. And Pod did was one of the best players on the pitch against uh, Kilmiley for a 36-year-old player who's had several knee operations and has had fierce bad injury down through the years. He's a warrior, Pod, and you want a warrior to go up against a fellow warrior in yeah. uh, Michael O'Leary. He's so, been plagued by injuries, Yeah, Pod, Michael, yeah. Michael O'Leary is going to cause a lot of damage. Pod is going to have to restrict that to a degree. Um, maybe Abby Dorney are going to need Michael O'Leary to have the game of his life if they're going to win this game. Maybe they are going to, like we talk about 2-12 for Podge Boyle in the semi-final. Um, maybe Michael O'Leary is going to have to score a 2-10, a 2-11 if they're going to win the game. You know what I mean? I think Oshin Mansell is a massive player. I think it's kind of gone a little bit under the radar that he has four goals in the last three I games. I think he's playing football with Nagel and Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you know so way much. <laughs> That's one of your other teams that you could just forget about for a couple of minutes. I, or, I, I um, prefer the Sheen for the the field. Uh, than, than in I, think, I think that occasional, I think James will disagree now. He's probably, James probably going to say that Michael O'Leary has to be inside in the square for the whole game. But I do think Oshin Mansell has been a huge influence when he has gone in mm -hmm. and played inside as a full forward against a full back. He's got four goals. I think Kyle O'Connor probably will be the man to pick him up because I, Kyle is a confident young player and Oshin is a confident young player. I think it could be one of the best individual yeah, strong, battles well, yeah. of the entire game because uh, Oshin, we've seen him as a Kerry Minor footballer. He was fantastic. He's had his own injury issues that have plagued him. But now for the last, for this last six weeks of this championship, he, it's been a different sport, but he has been the Oshin Mansell that we've seen yeah, in the Kerry Minors. And his back as well. 100%. Yeah, he's, he's massive. Like four goals in three games is no matter who that is. If that's a Podge Boyle or a Michael O'Leary, 
we're talking about it in more detail. Mm-hmm. But Oshin Mansell has that. He has been vital for them. And you cannot underestimate your David Egan's and your Jack Sheehan's either. Two very dangerous, dangerous players. And uh, we were talking about substitutes. Brendan O'Leary's going to have a huge role to play. Absolutely. Yeah. I'll talk now about the bench next. Yeah, the way you're talking there about O'Sheen Mansell and Jed Mansell earlier, you must have a, pa- a share in a greyhound with the Mansells, have you? <laughs> One of their best greyhounds, because that's the only reason you're talking them up, is it? No, I keep out of the greyhound business because I haven't a clue about it. <laughs> yeah, well, same about hurling. Anyway, uh, moving on now to uh, Eden. And uh, Actually, Eden. the point that John makes with... The one valid point he made. The one valid point he made. But O'Sheen and Michael, right? I think O'Sheen and Michael will probably alternate. They'd have to, I think, yeah. But the one ball you can get with the two of them inside, that's yeah. where you'll, you'll make... The, the, that's where you do a, bit, do a bit of damage. I actually think Daniel Carroll might pick up. Uh, I thought Darius Latchley. I thought Darius Latchley. Yeah, one of them. I think Darius Latchley will pick up. Whichever, up whichever one comes yeah. out. Power for power, I think. They'll pick yeah. up. Power for power. I'd say when Michael's inside, Paul will pick him up. When Michael's out, I think. You've got to hand him off. Of you do yeah. have to. Another yeah. underrated player, yeah. Daniel O'Carroll. Oh, had an out, baby, absolutely yeah. outstanding yeah. Has, championship. Has. Like, and if we can occupy Daniel enough that he can pick off his two points that he's been picking off every other game. Good striker. Do you know? Like, that's. It's, that plays a big part of it as well. Yeah. Right. Now, we have two things left to do. We're going to actually pick both sides now. Well, we'll see if there's any changes, <laughs> etc. Because obviously the managers of both sides are not relevant here. So we're picking them and then they can play them and see how they get on. <laughs> and what are you laughing at? We'll be upset if they don't. <laughs> All right. We'll be upset if they don't. And then we're just going to briefly talk about their bin strength. A few lads who could come on, we've mentioned already. And then we'll give our prediction. And I think then uh, JC will end this um, preview with some shots from the Abbey Dorney and the Ballyduff uh, Press Night Media Night. And maybe a word from the chairman as well. Uh, and we'll be talking. And uh, they spoke very well and well, very eloquent. And we'd like to thank them as well for facilitating us with interviews with the players, the manager and the chairman spoke themselves. But both camps, both Abbey Dorney Club and Valley Duff covered themselves in glory and they were very media friendly and looked after us. And John, you even got a cup of tea out there as well. There was tea in both places. And I think the chairman from um, Abbey Dorney, William O'Leary, went away to milk a cow. There was no milk there and he came back with a big two litres of milk. <laughs> And a big grin in his face. <laughs> Correct. Uh, absolutely. I don't think a man ever milked a cow, actually. Anyway, uh, talking about the, the teams that are going to line up. James, you would know from being involved in semi-finals to final, is it a case of unless a guy really underperformed or was injured, you tend to start the same team in the final? Is that it? And could, could Mikey Boyle make a miraculous recovery and start or would you think they hold him? I think they have to hold the impact. Impact subs in county finals could be huge. Mm-hmm. Like there's, there's always the old adage you can say, fellas, let fellas play themselves off the team. Yeah. In semi finals, you more than likely could play yourself off the final team, not play yourself onto it. Mm-hmm. Because maybe a bit of like teams kind of, managers kind of stick with that team, semi final winning team, they could probably give a bit of a. Give them the chance again in the final, say, go yeah. again, keep the team, don't have too many changes. Would don't you have a net flow. wing back? Would you have in by? If Dara Slattery was fit, I don't think he's needed. I think Dara Slattery. I think Dara Slattery, Slattery goes with back. back. I don't think he's needed. So you'd have him in the they need line. Evan more up front. Now this is the one week I think. Looking at it, they need their forward line more. Yeah, to be stronger than they had been in a lot of the games because what they faced so far, Kilmiley with a weak in defence, not as strong. I think Abdurrahman defence is stronger than Kilmiley defence mm-hmm. at the minute. You yeah, give, the minute, and Luke Snell. Abdurrahman defence is the strongest yeah, at the minute. Yeah, I think. Yeah. At those school camps, did you give Evan any? Uh, advice on <laughs> no. how to deal with uh, sort of tough defenders or anything like that. Did you show you know, any demonstration? Like or did he value his Christ safety and health <laughs> better than to go one and one with you? Do you know, it's, it's a bad enough thing. Like, these are two young lads playing their first final, Evan and Rachi. And they're relaxed. It was as if they played Shoot. 10. Yeah. Didn't care less. Yeah. That's yeah. a bad enough thing. I'm telling you, it's a bad enough thing. Yeah. They just don't care. Bang, in we go, I'm ready, I'm here. Yeah. It's my turn now. Yeah. That's uh, it. Uh, Aiden. Do you think that Abby Dorney might make changes or do you think it'll probably be the same I'd, starting 15? I'd Could be Brendan start or is he impact? No, the body, impact wouldn't, I'd say. the body wouldn't do 60 minutes with I it. don't think so. I think impact is Brendan's uh, game now. Yeah. And he's quite uh, happy with that actually. I'd say think. so, yeah, yeah, because like he's kind of that's the way he's prepared himself now all year. So I'd, yeah. be, I'd be very surprised if there was any change at all to yeah, 115. I think, so, I think yeah. that's the way it stays named 115. 
positionally then I suppose look, impossible to predict to be fair they, yeah. could, they could do well, they, because players don't keep their positions in finals anyway they move no, around no, you, like you, the man match and and exactly. they want to get on yeah. ball too yeah. like I mean Callum yeah. Callum's named the 13 there for the semi-final oh, he, like, anyway. he started midfield you know and played midfield <laughs> yeah. for the whole thing yeah, so yeah. you know I would be very surprised if there was any changes one fifteen there I think that's the team and yeah, would you be surprised if Abby Dorney painted numbers that we can actually see in the bottom <laughs> of the back of the jersey in, 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 instead of trying to figure out helmets who's and he? fellas, yeah, who's he and parentages and things like that? And uh, to be fair, I would say they yeah. are not great because <laughs> I, I, I also it. know the pain of not being able to see the number on the back of a jersey, obviously, like come yeah. anyway, so yeah. Yeah, but, uh, look at you'll change that for next year. I see. I, I don't. I don't know, so because I just know who they are by looking at yes, them. Like you know, yes, so yeah. I never have to look at the number. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah you, sure. you'll get over it. You'll be fine. So you're you'll reckoning because you know them, yeah. and you know the numbers <laughs> you that we're in. It doesn't. Make my life any different. Yeah. So I don't. I really actually care. think uh, Abby Dorney are, are more <coughs> certain of their starting fifteen than Bally Duff are. Yeah, I think. Without a doubt, it'll be the same Abby Dorney starting 15 yeah, as it was so, yeah. for the semi final. They'll hold Brendan O'Leary for definite, and they will hope that maybe somebody like Michael Slattery is in a better position to maybe give 10, 15, or 20 minutes rather than 5 or 10 minutes. Because Michael Slattery is a fine player if he was in condition fully fit to be able to contribute. That's yeah. what they'll be hoping. Um, because he's He'll definitely a, he, get ten minutes. He's, like a, he's a serious, 15. he's a serious impact oh, player, yeah. Michael Slattery as well. And of course, he knows the belly duff boys. He was bent. Like bend, the back, he was like the for two his, weeks. From, like the back of his hand as well. So his presence or otherwise on uh, Sunday is a little interesting subplot as well. For belly duff, I think they've some big decisions to make. Obviously, they have to decide if Darius Slattery comes straight back in. J.P. O'Carroll has to be putting himself in the mix, and so does Jack Enright. Now, you could say that Jack Enright probably deserves to start, but I still don't think he will. Who would you drop that? They, yeah, they yeah. will use... I think Billy Duff will have to drop someone, though. One. Like, they can't yeah. they can one. Right? Darius Latter has to come back but in. But it's a hard... Yeah. It is, is hard to drop a fellow. I definitely think yeah, they have more decisions to make, uh, Barry and uh, Padraig, yeah. than Francie has. I think Francie knows what his starting 15 is. Could, could we see, before they did this game, just to finish this, lads, uh, I think we we agreed. Abby Dorney would probably have the same starting fifteen. I think fourteen. Uh, I think there'll be one change in Belly Duff, if not two. That's max. I yeah. think it depends. Yeah. Uh, but I would say this. I think there's a possibility before the end of this because speaking to Liam Boyle, who's affectionately known as the Jap, um, he was telling uh, me and us out uh, at the media night about his health scare. Uh, and thankfully he's back on his feet and he's back training. Now, his son, of course, is Evan. So if you're the Jap on the field at the end and Evan, that'll be father and the son. Killian came on and got a goal, Killian Boyle. He's Mikey's son, so Mike and Killian to come on and the Jap. And you already have Podge on. He does, his lad is too young at about two or three months to play, <laughs> but he's only another year or two before he will be playing with the minors. <laughs> uh, all of them. That is a distinct subplot. possibility at the end. There's a subplot there, isn't there? Huge. Been, I know, look, the boys have done it before. All Liam and Kenneth played together in the 90s. Did it? Yeah. Did it. So it's, it did. It's, this would be like, it would be unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> it would be unbelievable. Yeah. It would just was it the size? Grew up or the father held on back in the 90s? Because <laughs> Liam was playing there. He was he still as good a goalie as he was. He when was. Started out, and I saw him last he never night. Got he was an umpire. He was there with choppers. And, and Mike, uh, that's William Quinlan, by the way. Uh, <laughs> last night in the Kilgarvan winning the County Intermediate title that beat St. Brendan's Alfred well. I think that was the third final that St. Brendan's have lost recently um with this bunch of players but uh yeah and uh he was uh, he was signaling clear and he was you know liam he's still a great guy he's he could still going to go still the patriarch of the of the mile family he is he's <laughs> so still going strong he's still there he's still going strong so lads we're going to now got to the stage where we're going to have to nail our colors to the mast you've seen the what we've discussed or you've seen the highlights of the semi-finals you know what's happening in the final. It's a big day for both clubs. And we wish both clubs well, by the way. Uh, obviously, Aidan has uh, a preference, and rightly so, because Abidoni has a, is his club. And um, his father was involved with it for years and years, and Aidan has taken up the, the mantle now. Dead father's actually there on the sideline. He will be on the sideline. So I'd say there'll be a fair deal of nerves and butterflies in uh, the Leahy household. 
Um, and James, of course, has played in, in more finals than he wants to remember. And he has the bruises and the blows. Um, to, uh, and, but he still has eight medals, to be fair. Uh, John, my son, we have no medals in the hurling. We have miraculous ones, all right, for escaping the hurlers at times when we write things about them. But we will get now a decision on what do you think? Obviously, Belly Duff, according to bookmakers, close enough to, we don't want to encourage betting, by the way, but just as an, an indicator, are two to one on, and it's two to one against 15 to eight, two to one against for um, the boys from Abbey Dorney. So we won't ask Aidan, but Aidan will allow you to say it anyway. Obviously, you're hoping. Say it out loud. I'm praying, <laughs> saying out loud. Yeah. Out loud. Abbey Dorney to win. Yeah, we, we hope there'll be no dry night because there, there's a wedding the week after. Oh, Christ. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The horses get married the week Does after. Does it finish on Sunday? Yeah. Does the game finish on no, Sunday? Uh, no, so no, extra time. It's a week after all the time. Uh, Rick Rick after after normal time, no extra weekend, time yeah. even. No, no, no. 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 Which is well, strange no. because I actually it's thought a strange one, yeah. going by the All Ireland finals, that was kind of the rule. That was a rule of thumb, but I think. No, no. Extra it's time, but no penalties. No, no, it's just a replay. Um, just clear that up. It's just just clear that up. It's something to do with money at the gate. Anyway, I move on. You not giving us at the gate, is it? Yes, I'll be there at the gate to get the money. So I suppose the commentators have to pay twice. Oh, oh at least. Twice, yes. <laughs> Two Two years. Years. New, new game, game. is called a new game. No, no, no. Look, I'm getting uh, married the week you. after. Um, what? <laughs> Again? Again. <laughs> what? Hopefully it's a Dornian Who do you think you're getting anyway. Who do I think you're married to? I'm sorry, no, who no. do I think is going to win the match? Who do I think is going to win the match? Uh, do you know, uh, the more we talk about it, as you can see, you can build an argument for both teams, obviously. But I have to go about it off only for the reason being a little bit battle hardened and their experience and have we seen the best of Abidorni yet? I don't I don't that's the thing. No we haven't. we haven't, that's the thing. Absolutely that's not. what is what is the best of Abidorni? Maybe not haven't seen it so far, that's why I'm picking about it off. But then what if Abidorni come with their best performance? Is that enough to win? Maybe it is. Maybe it could be because I don't so, think they've played their best yet. So you're tipping. So I'm still tipping Ballydoff. Ballydoff, but slightly, you, very, very slightly. Yeah, but you got you. You are really saying well. Abby Dorney are going to give it a, a rare rattle. Yes. Yeah, so really saying that really. Is. Yeah, you're actually sitting on the fence. <laughs> okay. You're not. John, well, so. a little bit of uh, you know sanity from you and a bit of reality and pragmatism. Who's going to win it? I think. Uh, if this was a romantic novel, and you, oh, you, 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 you love your romantic novels. Oh, I do, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Neil Zagoon is your favourite bedtime no, reading. No, no, no. Uh, it's, uh, Jackie Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> it's 49 Shades of Pink, is it? Or grey, whatever it is. Um, <laughs> I think if, if you're thinking, uh, apart from, apart from Bally Duff and their diehard supporters, I think... Uh, every other hurling enthusiast in the <coughs> county would like Abby Dorney to do what Crotta O'Neill's did last year and end their long famine. It's been 50 years. It was 55 years for Crotta. So I think uh, the romantic winner would be Abby Dorney. I don't think there's any debating that uh, fact. But you're um, not into romance, so give I, us the winner. I think Bally Duff, uh, <laughs> Bally Duff are not into romance. They're into hard currency in silverware. I do think, along with James, they are more battle-hardened. They've come through tougher games to get to where they are. They have a stronger uh, subs bench, which could prove to be the difference down the final furlong of this game, where this game will probably still need to be won, I think, in the last 10 or 15 minutes. From a neutral point of view, I want Michael O'Leary to just explode in this game. I want one of the best individual performances that you could wish to see in a county final, because I believe that he is capable of doing that on any given day. You could day. break the crossbar and the game would be abandoned. If, if it happens and Michael O'Leary puts in a performance, like, like James mentioned earlier, an Aidan Boyle three-goal performance. Dan like, Collins, like, 115. Yeah, like Michael, yeah. O'Leary, Michael O'Leary can do that. And if yeah. he does that, Abby Dorney can win the match. Yeah. It has but, to be that big, though, don't Yeah, it, I think to, it does have to be that big. It has to be that big. But I do, no feel, yeah. I do feel what we haven't mentioned so far which might be that other little trump card that Bally Duff have. They were in the final two years ago. And I think they admitted it themselves that maybe a little bit of cockiness crept in before that game against Causeway. And they ended up being run off the field by a superb uh, Causeway display. Uh, once bitten, twice shy. They've had that upset two years ago. They feel that they're in a more mature place to get over the line on this occasion. So I have to give a tentative nod to Ballyduff.
after tipping everybody all year. <laughs> right. Well, the dark horse everybody is out there. Finally. At the start of the championship, yeah. you said everybody Bit of all, no, 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 no. <laughs> a lot of people out there are waiting with bated breath to find out what the mystic one uh, will suggest <laughs> to himself. <laughs> um, <laughs> I would suggest, now, your man was talking about romance and his right. Now, I was talking, I am going to tell you now about a dream I had the other oh, no. night, and it wasn't. <laughs> what about two V at before you came in? <laughs> <laughs> no, and it wasn't after re, uh, reading a, a chapter, uh, the final chapter of Fifty Shades or Forty Nine Shades of, of Grey. I tell you what, I uh, envisage. I envisage that this will be a close contest, um, and I have a lot of respect uh, for Bally Duff, and I think they hold all the aces in this contest. But I think in a year where you would clear winning the All-Ireland Hurling Final and Armagh winning uh, the uh, All-Ireland Football Final, Rory falling apart in the US Open, wasn't it? Um, and, you know, standing over that... United winning the FA Cup. United winning the <laughs> FA Cup, yes. Things like and that. And Liverpool winning nothing. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> so, so really, I think that James O'Connor will be lifting the Nealus Flynn Cup at about half three, 20 to four uh, on Sunday afternoon. And Abby Doney will be burnt down almost on <laughs> Sunday night. Once I don't burn the post office, <laughs> <laughs> so I can collect my few bob, I'll be very, very happy. But basically, I do think it's going to be very tight. And I do give Abby Doney a chance. So with the... Intelligent one on my right saying Bally Duff, although he's romantically uh, involved with uh, Abby Dorney, with the man here who has all the experience, making every case to uh, sit on the fence, but eventually coming down on uh, behalf of Bally Duff. And of course, Aidan has to come down on behalf of Abby Dorney because he will be absolutely distraught after for at least two or three weeks, and maybe the rest of the winter, uh, if they lose. But if they win, we won't see him on trouble for a couple of weeks. <laughs> so I would think, I would just go narrowly with Abby Dorney to cause a shock. Split decision. So split decision. And if that, if that, if that happens, you will claim then that you've had the county hurling championship winner at your club for two years in a row. Absolutely. And my club, Abby Dorney, will do us proud and do the county. <laughs> Seriously, lads, I would be hoping that it will be a great game. Uh, best of luck to both sides. Best of luck to the match officials as well, particularly the referee, Kevin Jordan, as uh, Aidan has Leave suggested. It Leave, Leave it go. It go. Leave don't it go. Don't be blowing the whistle. We don't, don't want blow. free takers no. dominating we and winning this that. contest. And a little mention before we go as well, Mort. I think it's Lixna, is it? The Jubilee team yeah. from 1999. Mm, that's so. right. Yeah, we'll probably see. Sean Flaherty will be in on that, will he? Sean was there. 99, I doubt it. Was he not there? He was. Oh, he was retired. James, sorry. (coughs) James, I mean. James Mike, can't wait me if I know James no. too young. James is too young. No, right? James, sorry, James was uh, James was a young fellow. No five, I'd say, when he was playing a bit yeah. older. So. Well, see, yeah, so yeah, nice. that was Mike, No, I was just saying, yeah. to be great, if the grass was cut. Uh, <laughs> 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 1999 is 1999. That team, uh, we, might get, we might get a talk. <laughs> Uh, we might get a chat with him. In fact, James now is, is working for at uh, races and he's blogging on horse racing, oh, etc. He's, he's got God, very hard go filling, up, uh, filling in for Hugh Taylor, etc. That's our man, James. He, uh, John McCurry, keep it with John McCurry, can you see? Oh, <laughs> Could be one of those. No, no, no. He doesn't Tic-tac smoke guy. cigars and he doesn't have everything. <laughs> he's a stitch of a fiddle still. And uh, he's, he's married to one of the comic girls, isn't he? Mike's yeah. sister, yeah? Uh, so, yeah, a lot of connections there with Licks now. How do we drift down to marriage? Just the Jubilee, you were, you were the Jubilee celebrations. So, the Jubilee <laughs> celebrations and that team at halftime. We'll also have the Man of the Match interview straight after uh, the game on Saturday on Clubber. So, uh, look in for that. So, we'd ask you again, as we always do, uh, to enjoy the game. And if you can, if you can make the match, obviously, we want as many people at the game as possible. But if you can't, uh, you can watch it from any part of the country, any part of the world, on Clubber TV. All you have to do is get the annual pass, or you can get the subscription, and you can check all that up on uh, Clubber TV or Clubber.ie. And of course, as always, we are a lot alone. 
uh, involved in the hurling final, but we also, over the weekend on Saturday and Sunday, and indeed Friday night, we're streaming the club championship live at senior and intermediate level as well. A number of games there across many, many groupings. So stay tuned to us. We hope you enjoyed our little chat. And also, we would like to thank John C. O'Shea. He's our producer here. He's tor torn his hair out so many times. And tonight again, this was to last exactly one hour. I think we've just gone past that. It's dark. Um, it's getting dark. It's getting dark <laughs> outside. But uh, it was, it is a big match. It's a big final. It's a big day for everybody. And let's hope the colour and the flags, and there can only be one winner. We might go to replay, but on Sunday there can be one winner. We, let's hope and wish both sides well. And once they perform on the day, the, the, the best team will win. Uh, might get, it require a break, but they will win. And the vanquished, they will have a chance of coming back another day. And uh, that's the way sport is. So let's stay safe and uh, let's enjoy uh, the final on Sunday because the colour of the Gavi Super Value Senior Hurling Championship final is hardly bettered anywhere else in the country. Anna Donnie. <laughs> Are you...